and uh, we are your children. And that we have all the rights and all the privileges of being adopted into your family. And help us to understand that, Lord. Help us not to ask, but to reach for those things which are already ours that sometimes we hesitate to take. We are your child. We are loved by you. You want nothing but good for us. And we praise you and thank you for that. Father, I also want to lift to you this morning our tithes and offerings in the way in which we must and uh, I thank you for all that you've lavished upon us all that you've given into our care Lord to be good stewards to to be trustful to touch lives Father and so be blessed by what we give to you may it bless us and our communities. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to go to prayer uh, shortly and uh, stay. Laura Lee, broken knee. How is Laura Lee doing? She's home, but she's not doing very good. Broken knee? Broken knee. That's, that's got to hurt, right? But she's home anyway. She's home. She's going to be operated on no cover the second. November the 2nd? Okay. Okay, that'll be good. Lois has her eye operated on Friday. They're going to cut something off her eyeball and stitch it up. Sounds weird. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And I don't have to go through it, but I'll, I'll be there in spirit. I will. But we need to pray for Lois. And Are you allowed to go? Was that? Are you allowed to believe her? I'm allowed to, uh, yes, we did all the arrangement, and I'm allowed to take her up and, and stay there for that procedure and, and bring her back out again. And so that's very kind of them to let me just have to do the COVID things. And uh, same stuff I did when I did the, my colonoscopy last week, the joy, joys. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. But all went well because she said, I'll see you in three years, for which I was eternally grateful. Not every year, every three years, right? Even though they give, they give you a six pack of beer when you're lying there, you don't. It's it's the prep beforehand that's the killer, right? Drinking all that liquid and spending the night up. And, uh, anyway, um, so we'll be praying. And uh, how's the house going? Is is it going? Excellent. Praise God for that. And continue to pray for Carol's house to be built and that the people look like. People that are not dumb or the inspectors or whoever, right? And things move along well. And that's what we want. So she can get in there and the boys can go lobstering, right? My son is a lobster fisherman. He's getting his traps and everything ready. Uh, and he fishes out of Pupnico where they just burn that lobster down to the ground. So he's, in the, he's not involved in that as far as I know. He's a pretty gentle soul, but it's still in the area. It's pretty rough. And... Uh, we need to continue to pray for our church family in the midst of this pandemic and the things, and we'll talk about that shortly. So we're going to go for a time of prayer. We're going to sing a beautiful song, God Will Make a Way. And uh, while we're singing this, or whether you're listening to this, uh, just ask God to place on your heart and on your mind a face and name, um, a situation that we can lift to Him this morning. God will make a way where the sea
before you this morning. And we believe, Lord, that as we lift our prayers to you, that the strength and power of your answer will come down upon the object of our prayer and the blessings will come back to us. And so in our prayer, we are looking for and celebrating the receiving of the blessings that you pour out upon us. We want to lift those that are having surgery, uh, Laura, Laura Lee, and uh, that things will go well, Lord. We've had her in prayer for a while now. We ask you guide the surgeon's, surgeon's hands, uh, that, that uh, things go well, things are put back together well, and uh, for a quick recovery, Lord, knee pain, that's uh, very, very painful. Father, I praise you and thank you for clearing the way to, to get Carol's house up and running and getting her in there. We ask you to continue to just move things aside and pave the way for that, Lord, to bless that home and all that will come to it and uh, had a chance to walk through lord you already know what it looks like and uh, i think it'll be beautiful father just uh, want to pray for lois and her eye surgery on friday again that uh, you would guide dr deming's hand as she uh, cuts that whatever that is off her eye lord that, that it will heal quickly that the uh, pain and will not be there, Lord, and that uh, she'll get her vision back the way that she wants it. Father, I know that there are people in our lives that are struggling physically or emotionally or financially or in their relationships spiritually. And we ask, Father, that you, that your hand of healing rest upon each and every individual, wherever they may be. That you do a work as they release their issues and problems to you in obedience, Lord. That you will do a work of healing. Father, we pray for those who could not be here today, wherever they are. So that they are know right, know right now that they are loved. That they are wanted. They are not lost or forgotten or abandoned. The door is open and uh, they are welcome back. And uh, so, Father, just reach out into our community, touch people's lives this morning, encourage people to come in. We can keep them safe, Father, you know that. And we just want to love on them and uh, introduce them to you. I thank you, Father, for this and so much more. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing one more time. God will make a way where to the way ship that's sinking badly or or leaking badly and uh, needs some help. And uh, where's that help going to come from? That help's going to come from the Lord. Let me tell you about four gentlemen on the ship. The ship was sinking. The captain got the crew together. There was only four of them. The captain said, now, you've heard about this nonsense about the captain going down with the ship, Right? Eh, not happening. I'm going to be in the life raft. So that means there's only two positions left for the three of you. And so if I decided to ask you questions, if you can ask the questions, perhaps you can get in the boat. So we turned to the first person. He said, what is the, uh, the, the name of the unsinkable ship that hit the iceberg years ago? And the sailor says, well, I think that's the Titanic. He said, okay, you have a really good chance of getting in the boat right now. And he turned to the next one and he said, how many people sadly perished on the Titanic? And he said, 1,750. 
Ooh, that's good. You have a chance to get in on the boat. And he looked at the last person. He said, what were all their names? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you probably never got on a boat. You may think these days that someone's asking you a foolish question like that, that whatever's happening, whatever you need to do, whatever's going on in your life, whatever challenges arise, that if you answer this question like this, how many people were, you know, with the names or whatever, or something equally ridiculous, that you will get some sort of help. You will be rescued in some way. We are more than aware that we are a small congregation. We have limited people, limited finances. We have things that have been complicated deeply by the pandemic that is within us as far as keeping people away or stopping people from coming in the first place. Now, I'm not saying that we are in trouble because we are not. We are not. You are faithful. We're doing well. But we're in a time of challenge. We're in a time of fear among other people and increased restrictions by the government in the rules and regulations and isolations and masking policies and other things that we need to do. Not only are we having problems in our personal lives because of the COVID, we're having problems in our church life. We have an older congregation. I'm somewhat older myself, I think. I'm creeping up there. And there's nothing bad with that. We're an older congregation. We have no children. <laughs> it's not for a lack of one. I pray for a Sunday school teacher all the time. Right? And before the pandemic hit, we had some children. We had some younger families. They never came back. We have one musician, me, who sadly plays the guitar the best that he can, and I'm not a piano player. And so you don't... When we're doing the hymns and stuff like that, it really requires a piano. It's very difficult, and we can't do a lot of those. We have limited space for expansion, limited finances for the extra things that we might want to do, um, and a freedom of, of our faith and a freedom to preach and to reach out is hard. We have an older sound system. It works, but it's on its last legs. And so... How do we deal with all of these things and how are you dealing with some of the issues that you may have in your life? And so I want to look at several ways today in which we might come to some understanding where we might think, well, okay, this is how God's going to help us deal with this issue or that issue or how we're going to push through. The first one is this, we must focus on God's power rather than the size of our problem. It's easy to do, right? It's easy to see the wall. It's easy to see the issues, whatever they are, to think that they're insurmountable, that the wall is unmovable. You try to go over, you try to go under, you try to go around, you try to go through, you can't. And so that problem looms large over top of you, whether it's a diagnosis of an illness, whether it's a problem with houses or family or finances or so many other things. Sometimes these issues are very large for us and uh, we need to focus on God's power to help us with that rather than the issue itself. Because if you have sort of tunnel vision on the issue, you're never going to see a way out. Isaiah 55 and 8 to 9 says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is much bigger than the obstacles that you are facing or that you will face in the near future. And we need to focus on that. He is the creator of all that we see and hear, taste, smell, touch, and experience. And we need to lean into a God like this. We need to be careful about not allowing this obstacle to get in our way. Now, there are many people through history that have had unbelievable obstacles, but they've pushed through that and have done great things. I have a small list. 
Uh, Booker T. Washington in the state years ago was a slave. Thomas Edison was deaf. Abraham Lincoln, the first or, or, or one of the presidents of the states, his parents were completely illiterate, so he, he wasn't brought up in school that way. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson had tuberculosis. Julius Caesar was an epileptic. Louis Pasteur was so blind that even with his glasses, he could barely find his way into his lab. And look at the wonderful things he did. Helen Keller, helped by the, the patience and the love of God through Annie Sullivan, who was deaf and blind, Graduated at the top of her class at a prestigious university in the United States. Like if that is not an issue, if that is not a large obstacle, I don't know what is. If we have a handicap, if we see something in front of us, and we clearly do in many different ways, we need to look to the Lord. <clears throat> we need to look beyond the obstacles. Now, Sometimes God's plan to help us move through this stuff looks a little odd. Sometimes we think, Lord, what do you think? Like, what are you thinking? Right? Like, I can't do this, or I can't, I don't have the power, I don't have the abilities, I don't see how this is going to work. It makes no sense to me. But we need to rely on God's plan. We need to trust in God's plan. Even when it does not make any sense to us. Proverbs 16 and 9 says this. The mind of man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. You know, if we, if we have our plans and we take them before God, and we lay our plans at the feet of God, He will give us the way to move forward. He will give us our steps. He will give us the information we need. He will give us the knowledge that we need. He will bring people into our orbit that can help us do these things. Our faith family needs help, as in all do across the land, uh, and God may be helping us in mysterious ways. Now, I had a breakfast with the other pastors in Charlotte County last week, and every single one of them is having the same problem we're having. Every single one of them, their, their congregation is down by a third or more. They're having difficulty. People are staying away because of fear, because of, of the COVID. They're staying away for other reasons. They got into the habit. We were closed for two months. They got into the habit of doing something else rather than coming to church on a Sunday. And it's hard for them to come back again. We need to find new and fresh ways to move within this pandemic to still reach out to our congregation, still visit in some way, call in some way, be involved in each other's lives in some way and in our community. And we're going to have to do things that we not, you know, we, we never really did in the past. We're going to have to find something innovative in some of these ways that we come up with may not make sense to you, but they make sense to God. God's plan for your life and for our church has our best interest in mind. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us cast away the fears of what we're going to do or what we're going to have to do to gather together. And sometimes, I, I think God has done a work in your life in the past. And what we need to do is we need to remember what God has done. How God lifted you from something. How God delivered you from something. And we need to, those things need to come back in your mind and give you strength to move forward. Even if the way forward is in ways that, that are unorthodox. Or ways that we don't understand. And we may not all agree with those things. But if we lean on the Holy Spirit, these things will happen. I've told you this story before. I was called into ministry on uh, a little island in Ketchumacoochee Park. And uh, the school I was going to, I thought was uh, Holton. In, in Holton? Right? Yeah, look at the map. Holton, Maine. I can get there, no problem, right? I can drive there, it's not going to be very expensive, it's going to be local, I can do all this. 
And then within a month or so or of the uh, actual, to start my education, uh, I realized it was Houghton. And it was not in Maine, it was in New York. <laughs> and it was 90 minutes south of Buffalo. And uh, Lois and I still had children at home, we still had responsibilities. I was just transiting out of the Navy, and we didn't have a lot of flexibility. Canjet raised up an airline in Canada, a discount line, right? You had to drink spit on the way. It didn't serve you anything. Really. I mean, it was, you know, I was, I'm surprised I had seats. But I could get to Toronto for under 45 bucks. 45 bucks. And sometimes less than that. And I did that. And then I had to drive from my folks' place outside of Toronto, 10 hour round trip to, down to the university. And they gave me the, the dog mobile to use. It's called a dog mobile because when it's warm out, it smells like dog. And you had to drive the 10 hours with the windows down and you suffocated to death. It was horrible, but it was a vehicle. It got me to the, cap, to the down to where I was going. And for just a tiny bit over a tank of gas, that big old boat, it was a, like a Lincoln Town car, it went 10 hours back and forth. And so it didn't cost me much to get there because the airline, it didn't cost me much to get down because that my father always lent me the car and put a tank of gas in before I had it. I got down there, was staying in a hotel, or a little a cabin, a little cabin. It was hunting, people with their gun racks and stuff. I thought I was falling off the face of the planet. And, uh, and woke up the next morning to gunfire because it was the first day of hunting season. I thought, my God, where have you led me? <laughs> I, I know what I'm gonna do, right? And there was a little hotel there that you could stay at, on the campus, but it was it was very expensive. I didn't like we were just winging it when we first started, and I met a couple. I had a coffee before the first class started before we checked in, and uh, they said we used to take students in for years. They had a home right off campus with a couple rooms upstairs, and and I was talking with them. They said, "Tell you what, we'll uh, we'll let you stay with us. Just come on, stay with us. We give you a room upstairs and come and go." And they did that for four years. Wow. They did that for four years, right? When I went in, there was a lot of Canadians on the course, and the, the, the girl didn't know how to exchange the money very well, didn't have the exchange rates and all this other stuff that changed. And so I said, I'll do that for you, and I got a discount on tuition. So and what I did was I, I was I received my education at par rather than exchanging for American money. When I finished the course, when I finished my training, when I got all my education four years later, Canjet stopped flying. And they just flew, now the sun destinations for a while. I don't even know if they're still flying. I think so, maybe. But they stopped flying domestically. The dog mobile was retired because it was trying to die. If Lois and I sat down and looked at that wall that was in front of us, Looked at that obstacle, we say we don't have the money for any plane ride anywhere for four years worth, right? We don't have a way to get from Toronto down to the States. We don't have really a lot of money to stay, and the course is expensive as it is. Like I said, I was transiting out of the Navy. <clears throat> we were living on little money. We still had children at home. Um, if we looked at that, I wouldn't be standing before you here today at all. We just said, it can't be done, we can't afford it, we'll do something else for a living, I'll go to work in electronics somewhere. I kind of think that God provided an entire airline just for me. Just for me. Because it started up before my course, and it shut down after four years. Marvelous. And maybe other people got to enjoy my gift from God. Right? Whatever the obstacle is, no matter how big it is, we need to lean on God's power and God's strength. We need to uh, give ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to find a way to do what we want to do, what God has called us to do. And, and the only way I got my education was taking my eyes off the education and keep him on God. Now a lot of people say, you've probably heard the, the passage before, or the sentence before, or the saying, sorry, that 
<clears throat> Obstacles are things you see when you take your eyes off of God. And there's a lot of truth. Obstacles are things that you see when you take your eyes off of God. We need to consistently put one foot in front of the other to make progress. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 to 11 reads this way. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one of the same Spirit works all these things, distributed to each one individually, as he wills. Every single day we need to choose to take whatever steps are necessary, whatever steps the Holy Spirit leads us in. We here in Beaver Harbor were starting to make great gains. I was getting excited. I was getting excited. We, uh, we were, some days we had 40 in here, so or so, 40, 40, like it was unbelievable. And we had young, some young families in, we had some kids in, uh, we had an extra musician, we are starting to build that up, and things really seemed to be going well. The COVID hit, and other circumstances hit, and it just, boom, just cut us in half. It cut us in half. Um, the more musicians we wanted have gone for now, the more any more money that we could have used to enhance our building or start children's programs or do some of the other things that we want. I mean, it's wonderful. We're still sending 700 bucks to, like, let me say, we're not in danger at all. But the extra things are very difficult to do. It, to me, you ever play Snakes and Ladders? You ever play that board game, Snakes and Ladders, growing up, whatever? They don't play board games too much these days, right? It's almost like you made it almost to the top. And you land on a snake. <laughs> and some snakes just go back a couple, but some snakes, right? Remember that one snake? <laughs> oh, way to the bottom. And it seemed to me that I landed on a snake and it took me back to the bottom. And I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you that um, I was discouraged for a long time. Because it's not about the numbers, but it's about the health and about moving forward, about reaching other people and about growing and, and, and it's wonderful because, you know, we're older and if we don't fill this place with younger people, with babies, right, when we're gone, it's gone. And I would hate for that to happen. And so, you know, you have to put up with me and my character, but it's, it, it is discouraging and, and not just here at the church, but even at home sometimes. I know with Carol and the when they stop, like, cease and desist, stop building. And I, I can imagine, just kick the wind right out of your sails. It really did. Here's this, because I just finished walking through the place, and, and Carol's showing me, there's the bedroom, and the, the living room, and the kitchen, and we're doing this, and we're doing that, and it was, it's going to be fabulous, and getting ready, and all of a sudden, boom. Now, like, jump through the hoops, do this, do that, do this, do that. And it does. And there are things in your personal life, right, that, that, that kick that. Whether it's a diagnosis that you don't want, whether it's uh, problems with your finances. You know, we had that time when we were younger when one card paid the other card, and then the other card paid that card at the end of the month. And we got into trouble when one card maxed out because you know, we didn't have a card to pay the other card. But sometimes you look at these obstacles and things happen, things weigh you down. But we need to, and whatever that is, we need to go to the Lord. We need to go to our knees. We need to seek out the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's strength and guidance and wisdom. We cannot give up. We cannot despair. We cannot Throw our hands up and surrender. 
I have a vision for this church and where we're going to be and who's going to be here. And I believe with every fiber of my being that we are going to get there. We will have a children's program. We will have Sunday school. We will have fill this place up. We will do that. It's going to happen. I don't know how or when, but we're going to have to lean on God's help and God's understanding and God's timing and not our own. Because if we lean on ourselves, we may be tempted to throw our arms up and surrender. <coughs> Isaiah 43 and 16 to 19. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the mighty men, and they will lie down together and not rise up again. They've been quenched and extinguished like a wick. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and a river in the desert. These words are for us. These words were for me when I put them down on this piece of paper. Do not call to mind the former things. You know, what happened is what happened. You can't change what is behind you. Do not ponder the things of the past. Why people have left, why people have not come back, why the panic or the pandemic is here, why we have to, the restrictions, we, I don't know. I don't know. But if we continue to look back to that, we will be shackled to the ground. We may develop a bitter root of unforgiveness for events and situations or people that have caused us grief, and being shackled to the ground, that robs you of life. Jesus said, I died for you to give you an abundant life, to give you life eternal, and if you hang on to the past, if you look at the big things instead of how big God is, life will be just drawn away from you. What a horrible place to be. I tell you all the time, because I just love this account of Jesus coming off the mountaintop after what would be a series of sermons that we call the Sermon on the Mount. And the lepers coming up to him, remember that? And the people around him are scattered like roaches, gone, the light comes out. Because they don't want to be unclean by this person's leprosy. Jesus walks right up to him. Now, the man knows who Jesus is. We know who Jesus is. We know who Yeshua, Ben Joseph, Jake, right, Joshua. We know, we know who Jesus is. This man knew that Jesus had the power to heal him. We know that God has the power to heal, that God has the power to move. Lois and I ourselves witnessed a miracle. Witnessed a boy who had weeks left to live. Cancer all up and down his spine, in his liver, in his lungs, in his bladder. He was dying. Came to a healing service. And there were five of us, five pastors we were praying for. Him. It was a big service. Had a couple hundred people in and, and people from different areas coming. And he could have done anything in the last couple of weeks of his life. He decided to come to that healing service. The next day, his oncologist cried. She wasn't a religious person. She wasn't a Christian. Why? Because they did a scan and the cancer was gone. 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 Now, he can't have children because he had testicular cancer, among other things. But he's married, has a beautiful life, has a beautiful job. We have seen miracles. And we need to hang on to miracles. Because that's going to give us hope to see beyond the problems and the big things and the barriers and the challenges and the difficulties. 
Because if we continue to look at what's in front of us, Satan is going to pull in your mind. I know darkness is real. When I prayed for that Ashanti priestess in that little village in Ghana, in Africa, and it all broke loose, and this little 90, 80, I don't know how old she was, under 100 pounds, and she was moving me around like I was a featherweight, and I'm 250. And the noise and the sound, like I touched darkness, I touched evil. That feeling has never left me, and I don't ever want it to, because I know it exists. And if we look away from God, right? remember what I said? Obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes from God. When you take your eyes from God, your eyes are going to be somewhere else you don't want them to be. We will overcome in God's timing, in God's way. We may have to do things that we're uncomfortable with, things that are different, things that are new. I don't know what that's going to look like. But God has a plan for your life and God has a plan for our little white church here on the hill. Plans for us to prosper and grow and be fruitful. And that will happen as long as we lean on the power of God. Uh, I just want to read to you here it won't, I don't know if I put that up there. Don't worry about it, Lois. It's a new program which I put together yesterday just so we could do this this morning. But uh, I just want to read our passage from Corinthians. You probably know it by heart now. 1 Corinthians 13 and verses 4 to 7. Now, listen carefully. We are in for rough times. We are. That's just a fact of life. There's nothing we can do about that. You don't want to wear the mask. I, like It's the law. I don't have to wear one for now. Praise God. Thank you for that. Lord. And, but the, everywhere else we have to wear the mask. We don't have to like that. People are going to stay away because of that or they're not going to come because of that. We're going to have all kinds of problems in our personal lives with our restrictions, etc. People failing. Shops failing. Business is failing. Like, like, this is really bad stuff. If we are to survive, we need to love each other. We need to not take our eyes off of Jesus, and we need to love one another. And when things like this are happening, sometimes people get frustrated. They say things they ought not to say or don't say things they should say, right? All kinds of stuff happens. Feelings get hurt. Tension rises. What's happening here or not happening here? I, I was. I, tell, I don't know if you've been discouraged in the last little while off and on. I was discouraged. I really was. I'm coming out of it now. But it was a time of a, a discouragement for me. But in all of that, we need to love one another. And if we love one another with this agape love that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13 verse 4 to 7 we will get through this together with each other's strength, with each other's gifts we will get through this love and especially these days love is patient love is kind is not jealous love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly it does not seek its own is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffer, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. And here are the four things that will get us through. Here are the four things that will get us through. Right? Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. We are going through tough times. There is a wall. There are obstacles. There are challenges that we might find very large, very daunting. But if we turn to God, if we lean on His plans for our lives and His procedures and His timing and everything else, and we love each other together as a group, we will grow, we will get through it. Whether you're here in the church or whether you're in your own home, right? We'll get through this 
together. We will. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for all those who have come here today to pray, to lift praises to you, to hear your word, Lord. Help us. Give us strength, Father, to never take our eyes from you. Give us strength never to see the obstacle, but to see what is beyond the obstacle. See that you are bigger, looming behind whatever that obstacle is, whatever that challenge is, and we will be able to successfully move around or over or under or through in your power. And we will be able to do that with each other, and we will be able to do that in love. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing... I surrender all. And uh, truly, truly, uh, if we're going to get through this, uh, then we need to surrender everything that we are to God. That's the only way. That's the only way. You can remain seated and uh, we're just going to sing this together.